All right, so you're gonna go into your search engine and you're gonna type in youtube.com and you're gonna bring that up on your iPad. YouTube.com. Who do I still need to get tests from? Anybody else still have their test? All right. In, in the YouTube.com, there is a search engine within it. Y'all see it? Yeah. You're going to type in Tina, T-I-N-A, wing, W-I-N-G. You should see my pretty little face pop up on your screen. Click on it. I'm subscribed. I hear you. Okay. If you have not subscribed to it, do that now. If you have not subscribed to it, click on subscribe. Once you have described on it, See how I have this little thing with my arrow going down? At the top of y'all's screen, y'all have a little box like that with the arrow going up. On the top of your screen. You don't even got it pulled up yet? All right, push on that one, and it'll say bookmark. Yeah, push on that one. And you see where it says bookmark? Add bookmark. The second thing, add bookmark. You're going to add that to your favorites. So that it is easy for you to find. Did you subscribe to it? Yeah. Then you go into that. Add bookmarks. And then add it. That'll make it come up where it's easy. What? You can't find it? restrictions on your iPad? Apparently you do. But it says on here, some results are hidden because restrictions mode is turned on. And the school's the one that turned that on. So you've done something on your iPad that you weren't supposed to do and they put restrictions on it. Alright, so do you ever what? I need help. I can find it. Yeah. Do you have restrictions on your iPad? No. Nope. Well, that's what she just told me, but it says she does. This is the one. Mr. Smith, what about you? It's right there. Yep. How do you not see my face? Hit subscribe. Mr. Right. Alright, then click on that button. Mm-hmm. Add to the farm. Hey, that way it's easy for you to find. So now, and I've been doing this for a while, but I was trying to get all the kinks and stuff worked out of it. So from now on, if you miss my class, for whatever reason, and it's a day we took notes, you're going to go into my YouTube channel. And I will have, like, here we go. This was lab. This and this was lab from Friday. So if you weren't here on Friday, you need to watch this one do, and answer your questions. And then you'll do this one and see if you're right or wrong. Okay? I try real hard to put the date on it and something that had to do with the topic. So like the other day when y'all said it took forever for the test review to show up. Did 
always go into your book, go into YouTube, and it'll show up faster than you download it through Google. So that is the way you need to do it. So I won't be posting those videos anymore. I mean, I might make a comment on there about you can find today's videos at my YouTube channel, but they won't be there in Google Classroom for you to click on. My lecture videos will not be there anymore. Does everybody understand? Any questions on that? Now, the scary thing is, is how many people I've got that's viewing my videos, because I don't have 109 students, or 190 students. There's one on there that's got 300, and there's one on there that's got like 600 views. You're famous. No, they do it on different subjects than y'all are. But now, when you pull up my YouTube channel, it's going to have 8th grade and 7th grade videos on there. Sometimes I put 7th grade, sometimes I'll start trying to remember to do that. Sometimes I don't. So you need to know what our lesson was that day. You need to know what notes we were taking notes on that day. Which means you're going to have to go to Google Classroom and pull up the assignment to start with, right? Yes, ma'am. Also know that you're not going to be able to see the screen very good in the lecture notes. Because <coughs> the, the recorder doesn't pick that up. You'll still have the videos that I use in class to lecture with will be in the regular lesson. They'll still be in there where you can click on them and watch them. These are just the ones where I say, okay, you need to write this down. And I repeat it four or five times. Y'all write it down, then we move on. That's what's on that YouTube channel. Those videos. Okay? Any questions on that? So now... When you've been gone and I ask if you did your notes, you can't say, Miss Tina, I never could get the video to download. Because you can go to YouTube and get them. They don't have to download to your Google account for you to be able to watch them. Okay? Everybody good with that? All right, open up your notebooks. We are starting a new. Uh, You'll have to find out from you have to go to the library and ask this partager. I'll call and ask her about it. How you fixed it. Okay. Uh, we're starting with a new concept, a new standard today. We're gonna to be talking about energy. Today we're just talking about energy in general. Um uh, and then we will go into like kinetic energy and uh, potential energy and thermal energy. Lots of energies out there in the world. Hmm. Seventh hour energy. Yes. <laughs> checks I'm not spending my whole time searching through there trying to see where you did it when I say put it on the very next page that's where you need to put it today is the 11th it's the 8th the 8th I mean the 8th it's the 11th month the 8th day all right so I got energy wrote down Popular science questions asked on the internet. And I gotta hand it to you because there are a few questions that are as confounding and complex and fascinating and inspiring as this one that the collective consciousness has spewed forth. What is energy? I'm Hank Green, and this is the world's most asked questions. <laughs> is everything. It's everywhere. It's one of the true constants of the universe because as long as there's been a universe, there's been energy. And while it comes in lots of different forms that can seem different to us, they all amount to the same thing. Energy is the ability to do... Alright. Energy 
is everything. Energy is everything and everywhere. Energy is everything and everywhere. Energy is everything and everywhere. Everything. It's everywhere. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. It's one of the true constants of the universe. It's one of the true constants of the universe. Now, this first line right up here. One of the true constants of the universe. What is a true constant? What do you think true constant means? What does constant mean? It happens what? All the time, or it's always there. So it's energy is one of the true constants of the universe. The universe, be, when it started, became had energy, and will always have energy. It's a true constant. It's a true constant of the universe. It's always there. Now this isn't the energy as in electricity that we use. Although there is, that's one of our energies, and we'll talk on it just a little bit. Not a whole lot, because we have three that we're focusing on, but it's not just electrical energy. Because as long as there's been a universe, there's been energy. And while it comes in lots of different forms that can seem different to us, they all amount to the same thing. Energy is the... Energy is the ability to work. Energy is the ability to work. Ability to do work. And work is just the act of displacing something by... All right, after you write down, energy is the ability to work. Skip a line or two and write the word work. Now, this is the science definition of work. Not necessarily the way we look at work, okay? Work is the act of displacing something with applied forces. Work is the act of displacing something <coughs> with applying force or by applying force. Work is the act of displacing something by applying force. By applying force. So say you stomp on a stomp rocket. The force of your foot hitting the pedal is turned into the force of the air leaving the cannon, bending your rocket sailing. Or maybe you're enjoying the nice patty melt. The energy from that food is broken down for all of the quadrillions of cells that you have to do all of the things that they have to do. Make copies of your DNA, assemble and repair proteins, transport materials from one place to another, make muscle cells contract. You know, all the stuff of being alive. That rocket sailing, your cells toiling away, your phone or computer being on right now to watch me, that's all work being done. And the ability to do these things is inherent in everything around you, even things that look inert, completely lacking in energy, like this log. This log, for example, is chock full Everybody of chemical needs to have energy their head because needs it's to be watching this video. Of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen formed into lignin, which is the stuff that makes up wood. All of the bonds between all of those atoms and every molecule of lignin contain energy. How do I know? Because if I were to apply enough extra energy, like as heat, to break those bonds, it would release that chemical energy as fire. That chemical energy is also the kind of energy you get from your patty melt. Your body is fueled by the chemical bond energy in sugars and fats and proteins. But this log also contains nuclear energy. Each atom in this wood has a nucleus made of protons and neutrons, and the energy that binds them together is one of the most powerful sources of energy in the universe. If you could split one of the atoms of carbon or hydrogen in this log and rip those protons and neutrons apart, it would release some of that energy. There's so much nuclear energy in each atom that if I could unleash all of it that's in this log, there would be a giant smoldering crater where I'm standing and everyone in the town of Missoula, Montana would be dead. So everything that's made of atoms has nuclear energy locked in. All right, everything that's made of atoms has nuclear energy locked up in it, including yourself. Everything that's made of atoms has nuclear energy locked up in it. Everything 
methane that's made up of atoms has nuclear energy locked up in it. And why is that? Because we have a nucleus. And what lives in the nucleus? Nuclear energy. Stop a minute. But also, it turns out that mass and energy are the same thing. If you might have... Ah, in the science world, they, they say that mass and energy are the same thing. Mass and energy is the same thing. So that means if mass takes up space, what does energy do? There you go. And the same thing, you might have heard of this little equation that a German patent clerk came up with about 100 years ago, E equals MC squared. And there are so many other kinds. All right, we need to write this math problem down. E equals MC squared, if you look up on here on the board. I have the problem wrote down like it is in the book. Yes? Yes, ma'am. E equals MC squared. <coughs> Underneath that, I want you to write energy equals mass times speed of light squared. So the E stands for energy, the M stands for mass, and the C squared stands for speed of light squared. Okay? The two variables close together means we what? We multiply. Do we do the, uh, do we square the speed of light before we multiply it with mass? No. Yes. yes. Order of operations. Yes? Yes. Don't you do square roots or power two yeah. before you multiply? Yeah. All right. We will learn. We will, there will be one, two, I think maybe three math formulas you will learn in here while we're doing energy. And there will be worksheets that we'll do on them. And there will be test questions that are math problems because physical science has math. It has formulas, just like chemistry does. Those are your two that has the most math and formulas in them. Has everybody got that? Equals MC squared. And there are so many other kinds of energy that I'd love to get into if we had the time, but even though they may seem different, they can all be used to do work. Whether it's driving a turbine, or moving an engine piston, or allowing the screen on your tablet to glow, or if it's that most mysterious of energies, dark energy, causing the universe to expand more than it seems like it should. But here's the thing to remember. Once the work is done, the energy isn't done. Because energy never goes away. Energy never goes away. Energy never goes away. It can never be destroyed, and in the same way, it can never be created. All right, after energy never goes away, skip a line. And I want you to write the law of conservation of energy. Conversation, conservation. C-O-N, S-E-R, V-A, T-I-O-N. Spell it one more time. Conservation, C-O-N, S-E-R, V-A, T-I-O-N. Conservation of energy. Energy. So the law of conservation of energy is the same as the law of conservation of mass because we just found out that science considers mass and energy the same thing, right? So that would be you cannot destroy or create energy. Or you can put you cannot create or destroy. I don't care which order you put it in. Energy can never be destroyed and it can never be created. You're looking, it's up on the board in big white letters in the right hand corner. 
Energy can never be destroyed. It can never be created. It can only be transferred from one source to another. It can only be transferred or transformed. They don't have the word transformed up there, but I want it in your definition. It can be transferred or transformed from one source to another. It can be transferred or transformed. Transform is spelled T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M-E-D. Transformed from one source to another. Oops. Cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed from one source to another. Energy in the plants and animals that were in patty milk were transferred to you. Or it can be transferred from one form into another, like the chemical energy in the wood being transferred to light and heat as fire. You can think of the universe as a constant flow of energy, and we are just little pit stops along the way. Everything your body is doing right now, whether it's your lungs absorbing oxygen, your heart pumping blood, your brain cells firing as you watch me and learn things, all those things are using recycled energy that's been around since the origin of the universe. And simply by being alive, you're releasing that energy back into the environment around you to be used by other things in other ways. So internet, to answer your question, energy is everything. And for those of you who answered our questions on our SciShow survey, where you feel like you get your energy may be keeping you up at night. Survey takers who have a hard time falling asleep nearly. All right, now we're going on to this video. There is some note taken in this one, not a whole lot. Thanks for stopping by. Down. I'm Virgil and this is Two Minute Classroom. If this is your first time seeing my face, welcome. If you like my mustache, you should also like this video and I'll take it as a personal compliment. Now on to the topic at hand, the conservation of energy and energy in general. So the law of conservation of energy states that in a closed system, that is a system isolated from its surroundings, the total energy of the system is conserved. Or more loosely stated, Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred or transformed. This All right, so this is the technical definition of it. In a closed system, isolation from its surrounding, the total energy of its system is conserved, which means it's not being used at that moment. Okay? So if I have this ruler and I put it over here on this desk, kind of isolated all by itself. Now this ruler's made of wood. Isolated all off by itself and it's not doing nothing, right? No. So that is considered it's isolated from its surroundings and the total energy of the system is being conserved. So it's not using any of that. How can I make this wooden ruler release energy? That way, what else? Burning. You said burning. Catch it on fire, right? And what energy is it producing once it's once it's caught on fire? Heat. Heat. And what else? Thermal. Huh? Thermal. It is thermal heat. Um, yes. Light. And light. So the two types of energy that this yardstick is now putting off because we unisolated it by adding heat to it or fire. It is now putting off the energy of heat and the energy of light. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, so everybody should have found that energy cannot be created or destroyed, and it can only be transferred or transformed. Yes? Yes. Also known as the first law of thermodynamics. So what do I mean by cannot be created or destroyed? If a bomb explodes, it's creating energy, right? and the ball stops rolling, its energy must have been destroyed. Well, no, because energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred or transformed. Let's talk a little bit more about energy. The SI unit for energy is the joule, named after James Prescott Joule, and there are different laws. All right, so the SI unit for energy is joule. An SI unit is what we use to measure stuff. So how do we measure gasoline by the what? Gallons. Gallons. So that's the SI unit for gasoline. How do we measure 
how tall you are. Inches. Feet. feet and inches. So that would be our SI unit for, for measuring somebody, right? So the SI unit for measuring energy is joule. So if I had to do this math problem and I plugged in some numbers, I'm gonna put three up here and I'll put four here. So M is three, C is four. So the first thing I have to do is what? Take four times four because I have to do my square root or power two, right? So four times four is eight times three, yes? Four times four is eight. No, it's 16. Sorry. 16, yes? yes? And then I take three times 16 and what do I get? Three times six is 18, carry my one, 48. Does everybody agree with that? So my answer would be 48 joules. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions on that? No? No. All right. You need to know, if I put on the test, what is the SI unit of energy, you need to know that it's joule. Okay, and if there's more than one, then you add the S. Just like on inches. Forms of energy. I'm gonna talk about five. Number one is kinetic energy, and it's probably the energy you're most familiar with. Now when this I take notes on this, motion. I want you to listen so to it. Any we'll start object taking moving through kinetic space energy has kinetic energy. energy. This is kind of an ball thrown through the air, a swimming fish, uh, and even a shuttle, a space shuttle flying through space. Number two is potential energy. This is the energy that an object has due to its position relative to some reference point. So a book set on a shelf has potential energy. Uh, a ball at the top of a hill has potential energy. And in both cases, they have potential energy because it can be easily converted to kinetic energy, right? If the book falls off the bookshelf or the ball rolls down the hill, we're taking that potential energy and converting it to kinetic energy. Number three is chemical energy. This is the energy stored in chemical bonds and released through chemical reactions. The bomb example I mentioned earlier is not energy being created, but energy being transformed from chemical energy to thermal energy. Photosynthesis takes solar energy and converts it to chemical energy. So the energy of the sun is literally being stored in chemical bonds within plants, which is pretty sweet. Number four is electrical energy. This is the energy due to a separation of charges and flow of electrons, also called an electrical current. All your household appliances use electrical energy and convert it to some other type of energy. For example, your blender converts electrical energy to kinetic energy to spin the blades. Your toaster converts electrical energy to thermal energy to toast your bread. And finally, number five, thermal energy. So this is the energy given off as heat. Uh, when you start a campfire, you're breaking chemical bonds in the wood and transferring the chemical energy of those bonds into thermal energy, fire. Right? Friction is another example. So when a ball is rolling across the ground, there's friction between the ball and the ground. Uh, this friction slows the ball down, but it's actually that kinetic energy being transferred into thermal energy, which is then dissipated into the ground. Um, it's also why you can warm up your hands by rubbing them together, because you're taking kinetic energy, the movement of your hands, and converting it to thermal energy through the friction. So those are five types of energy that you should be familiar with. There are All right, in your book, right, the five main types of energy. Now there's more energies than five, but these are the five main ones, or the five most Common. utilized, common, whatever. Just put down the five, the five main types of energy, and then you're going to list them. Kinetic, potential, chemical, electrical, and thermal. And then as we go through these next weeks or so, we will... Um, Next few days, we'll talk about each one individually. But I want you to have them listed. If I, huh? You're supposed to know. You, you want me to? Because we're going to go straight into kinetic energy tomorrow or potential. I don't know which one I have down to do first. Probably potential. I like to do potential and then we go into kinetic easily. I just need you to know if I say list 
four of the five main types of energy you need to be able to list for the type. Or if I say list all five of them. Okay, so if I put them all together like that in your notes, it's going to be easier for you to study all five of them together, yes? yes. All right, so everybody got that? Still have a few people writing. Those are the main ones. And all those examples illustrate the law of conservation of energy, which is energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred or transformed. I hope this video helped you if you enjoyed seeing my face. If you're not a subscriber already, please do so now and check out my other videos. And if Okay, so our next video is kind of a, a recap also, or an overview, but there's no notes. We won't take any notes off this video. I just want you listening and paying attention. Okay? Energy is not easy to define. Things have energy, but you can't hold a bushel of energy in your hands. You can see what it does. Heads up. But you can't see so it. We're going to asleep. There are different types of energy, but the differences between them are manifested only in how they make stuff behave. We do know that the total amount of all the different types of energy in the universe is always the same.